Well, howdy. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm back from my foreign travels where we had way too much fun. And um, actually, not too much fun. We just had a lot of fun and saw a ton and learned a lot. And you could spend literally half of your life touring castles and ruins and really cool towns in Europe. Um, we think that in this country, we have um, history and antiquity. No, no, doesn't even hold a candle to what's over there. When you're walking through buildings that were built in like 700 and 1100, that's like so amazingly cool. So we really had a good time. Um, I came home with the respiratory crud. It's no fault of the Europeans. Uh, this is my own fault because I am a, we're talking TCVM today. We're going to talk about TCVM as it res relates to eye health, but I'm going to put some TCVM on board that relates to why I have the respiratory crud. So I am a very, very strong wood personality. Wood is the liver and the gallbladder. And guess what? the liver rules the eyeballs. So it actually does go along um, because we're talking about eyeball health. And um, so it's really all leads back to the liver and the wood element. But I am such a strong wood element and I have been my entire life. You're basically born with your element. And um, as a wood element, I'm pretty opinionated. Shocking. I bet none of you knew that. Uh, I'm pretty opinionated and I'm really easygoing and easy to get along with as long as things are going well. But at the first sign of anything getting stressful, like too much on my plate or things not going my way or people getting nitty gritty, nitpicky about things, you know, you metal personalities who have your spreadsheets that I don't know how to make and don't want to read. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but when things aren't going my way or I get really stressed, I explode. And so that's what wood personalities do. We um, we hold things in and try to go with the flow until we can't deal with it anymore. And then the frustration builds up and we have liver cheese stagnation and then it explodes like a volcano. And the element that is in charge of keeping my wood in check is metal. Metal is the lung and large intestine. And so metal is, think of it as the ax trying to chop down the tree. The ax is trying to keep the wood under control and keep the growth under control and keep it from taking over everything. So after 60 some years, I'm not going to give you the exact number, but after 60 some years of having a wood personality that is always like exploding, uh, my metal element has said, you know, I'm kind of worn out. I've been trying to chop down this tree for a very, very long time and you're just not having it. And so when I get sick, it always shows up in my metal element because it's weak. So I really need to support my metal element. So it means I need to eat lots of white foods and lots of mushrooms. And the great thing about Europe is they eat mushrooms for breakfast every single day. It is on the menu. Very interesting. Um, I was I, I was enthralled with Scottish and English food. So for breakfast, there's always baked tomatoes, baked beans, and it has to be Heinz baked beans, um, mushrooms, sauteed mushrooms. There's either scrambled eggs or like a poached, like a kind of a hard boiled poached egg. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and then you get blood sausage, um, haggis, regular sausage or beef sausage uh, or ham or uh, sorry, what they call streaky bacon, which is really more like Canadian ham or Canadian bacon. So really interesting. And so that was our uh, breakfast. And then we did work our way through a lot of fish and chips. Um, and there definitely are good fish and chips and not so good fish and chips, but we really enjoyed that. So um, really a lot of fun. I would strongly recommend if you ever get a chance to go overseas, the people of England and Scotland are incredibly nice. We met one not nice person 
the entire time. And that was literally within like the first half hour. Um, but the rest of the time, everybody bent over backwards to be pleasant and nice and offer us anything that we needed. The food was amazing. The restaurants were amazing. And we had a really good time. Unfortunately, my metal element gave out about halfway through the trip. <clears throat> that was due to lack of sleep, a little bit of stress, you know, too much fun, whatever. Anyhow, so we're going to talk about the wood element today, but we're going to talk about it, how it relates to the eye. Because in TCVM, the eye is the window that allows actually us to look at all of the internal organs and see how they are working because there are different areas of the eye. Joey, if you want to put up that picture and unfortunately, um, let me hold this one up for Instagram. Let's see if I can hold this one over here for Instagram. There we go. All right. So um, the eye allows us to see the function of all the internal organs. While the whole eye is associated with the liver, parts of the eye are associated with other organ systems. So the pupil, I can't tell if I'm in the right place. Um, the pupil is associated with kidney jing, um, which is your life essence. The blood vessels of the white and the conjunctiva are associated with the heart. Uh, the spleen is associated with the upper and lower eyelids. Um, and so when we're looking at a patient, we can know abnormalities in specific portions of the eye. Uh, and that gives us an idea as to what body system is being affected. So there's also different areas of the eye. So on the picture, yeah, I think I'm pretty well centered. Um, and it's up on Facebook and YouTube. The top center of the eye is the heart area. And then as we moved, uh, the outside of the eye is over on, sorry, the inside of the eye is over on the small and large intestine side. The outside of the eye is on the liver side. And then we have different areas, the lung, the kidney, the gallbladder, spleen. So all the different organ systems are actually outlined around the eye. And what's really interesting about this, if you um, know people who study iridology, uh, they're basically studying the iris of the eye and you literally can map out what's going on in the body um, just with the study of the eye, which is so cool. I have never studied that, but looking at it from a TCVM perspective, you can see that by looking at different areas of the eye, we can see different areas of the body that are having problems. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, all right. So... Um, so we can see pathologies in specific areas of the eye, which may correspond with an imbalance in the corresponding organ. So for instance, in practice, I would see melanomas that would show up usually at the junction of the uh, white part of the eye with the conjunctiva. And so depending on where that would show up in the eye, that would give you an indication of what body system may have been out of balance that allowed that melanoma or tumor to grow in that particular area. So it can be really cool if you get, um, you know, really into uh, the nitty gritty of the different parts of the eye. Um, all right. So a normal animal has clear glistening eyes and pink moist conjunctiva. So that's the pink part around the eye. Uh, dull or cloudy eyes without luster indicate a deficiency pattern or loss of shen, which is your, your brightness, your mental um, aspect. Uh, so depression, uh, you'll get that dull, hazy eye. Um, let's see, a deep red color of the blood vessels uh, of the eye indicates a heart, heart heat pattern, whereas pale conjunctiva indicates a blood deficiency pattern. So we can think about that. If you have an animal that's anemic or you're anemic, you're, if you pull your eyelid down, you oh man, it's really pale. That's not looking so good. It's not a nice bright pink like it should be. On the other hand, if it's, if you've got bright red blood vessels in your eye, that means you've got some heart heat, um, something that may be going on in your chest. Um, injected sclera uh, 
inflammation of the eyelids themselves, inflamed conjunctiva, often with a discharge, occurs with liver heat. Um, and I can tell you a liver heat pattern or li liver yang rising, which is heat rising. Um, in practice, very commonly, and unfortunately way too commonly, I would have people come in, particularly with large breed, middle-aged dogs. And the complaint would be, wow, all of a sudden his eyes are really red and he seems to be bumping into things. So these dogs would come in with just these bright red blood vessels, bright red eyes. And usually they're being presented by the owner thinking, oh, he's got a little conjunctivitis, allergies in his eyes. And when I would do the exam, not only did they have these bright red blood vessels, bright red eyes, they also were having trouble seeing and many of them were even blind. And probably 90% of those dogs that came in like that actually had lymphoma or some other cancer. And that would be the first symptom that the owners would notice would be these bright red eyes. So never ignore something going on in the eyes. First of all, eyes are almost always an emergency. If all of a sudden they're squinting and they can't get their eye open, they're pawing at their face, the eyes are bright red, you've got a discharge that is green or yellow or copious, meaning there's a ton of it, um, that's an emergency and you really should have them seen. Um, it could indicate, so when I would see eye problems, not only would I look at the eye, I'd say, okay, well, what is underlying this? There's some, you know, if they scratch their cornea, okay, that's a scratched cornea. We know we have to deal with that. But if there's not a scratched cornea, but all of a sudden we have all this redness, infection, inflammation, what's driving that? Where is that coming from? And because I'm TCV, I'm trained, for me, I'm always going to go back and say, what's going on with the liver? Is there a change in the appetite? Is there a change in thirst? Is there a change in sleeping pattern? Are they panting more? Uh, is there a weight gain, a weight loss? Are they hiding in different places? We, we ask a lot more questions than just, ah, he's got conjunctivitis, here's your eye drops. Um, so for me, particularly if I see them coming in with these really bright red, um, lots of blood vessels inflamed, I want lab work because I want to see what is driving that inflammation. I'm probably going to treat it with some drops to get started, but I also want to make sure I'm not missing the big picture that's underlying. Okay. So, uh, cherry eye in dogs, we don't see it very common in other animals, uh, but cherry eye where the um, nictitans, which is the third eyelid and the little gland behind it pops up. And so you have what looks like a cherry or a pink uh, round thing in the corner of the eye. Um, that is often associated with liver heat or blood stagnation. Um, and uh, blepharospasm, which is blinking, squinting, uh, or drooping eyelids could be due to a spleen chi deficiency, which is the digestive system. Because remember, we talked about the eyelids are the window of, they're ruled by the spleen. So if we've got those droopy eyelids, that's spleen chi deficiency, um, or if they're squinting a lot. Um, cataracts, especially inherited cataracts, are often due to kidney jing deficiency. Again, that life essence. Um, so we actually got our Gabby, who's our uh, middle-aged English toy spaniel. She was in a breeding program. She was removed from the breeding program because one of her puppies developed juvenile cataracts and the breeder was smart enough to say, ooh, we don't want any more of those. Um, so that is a kidney jing deficiency. Gabby also has SM and CM, which is a kidney jing deficiency. So not a huge surprise. Um, dry eye or keratoconjunctivitis sica, KCS. That's what our little Georgie came to us with. And that's where they're not producing enough tears. Um, so a lot of times that's liver heat. Uh, it can be a liver yin and blood deficiency, which in his case, that was a lot of it, which is where diet comes in really handy. We have the dry eye diet on the website. It's also in the yin and yang nutrition book um, because dry eye is something that we see very commonly. It's a liver yin and blood deficiency. And when it's caused by that, it is a 
really easy fix. So in George's case, he came to us at a year and a half of age. He had been in foster care since nine months of age. Nobody wanted to adopt him because his dry eye was so severe. He required drops multiple times a day. Who wants to pay money to adopt a dog and then have to pay money every month for the drops and pay money or spend all that time putting drops in the eyes? Um, I knew I could fix that. We adopted George. He's like the best dog ever. And that's where the dry eye diet came from. It's gone through a few iterations over the years, but George's dry eye was completely cleared by taking him off kibble and putting him on the dry eye diet over a period of about three months. Um, and so now he does not have a dry eye issue except for the eye that doesn't blink uh, because of his paralysis. So that's not a true dry eye. That's a different issue. Um, so, and then a dry eye can also be a kidney yin or jing deficiency, particularly if it's something that they're born with. Um, retinal detachment is often associated with kidney jing deficiency or again, liver yin blood deficiency. So we really want to feed the liver well, um, in order to maintain eye health so that, um, so this is my constitutions diet that I made uh, that is available through All Provide, the wood constitution. It has things in it to support liver blood and liver yin. So um, we've got liver in there and we've got dark leafy greens, but we also have things to drain liver chi stagnation. So we've got celery and cabbage and basil because we want to keep that um, liver yang from rising. We want to keep that heat from rising. We want to keep the liver on a nice even keel, but also support the blood support of the, the liver. Um, okay. So that's just kind of a review of that. All right. So, um, all right. So I've got some food therapy, uh, based on a couple of different things. So liver fair, liver, fire flaring up. Say that three times fast. I dare you. Um, liver chi stagnation creates heat, which tends to go upward. So dogs who are frustrated that are wood personality. Um, I really like to think, sorry guys, but I really like to think of Dobermans, Rottweilers, um, German Shepherds, dogs that are supposed to be kind of the black and tans. They're supposed to be guard dogs. They're supposed to be protectors. Um, that's what wood personalities are really good for. Believe me, I am the protective mama bear. Don't you dare mess with my kids or my granddaughter or my dogs. <laughs> so anyway, but we get frustrated very easily. And so those animals, if they are, um, if, again, like me, if, they're, if things are not going their way, if there's, if they're overworked or they're not worked enough, um, they get that liver chi stagnation and then it rises up and all that heat goes up to the eyes and we get that redness. Um, so it could show up in Western medicine as conjunctivitis, keratitis, dry eye, uveitis. Um, and if it's severe and chronic, it can be associated with early stage cataracts or glaucoma, threatening to result in later blindness. Um, so we see this more in the wood type personalities with that irritable or aggressive behavior. A lot of times they'll be panting and cool seeking. They may have warm ears, warm paws when you touch them. The tongue's probably going to be red or deep red. It may have some crack lines in it. Um, and so our goal is we want to clear that liver heat, clear that fire, and uh, get things kind of calmed back down. And so we can tonify yin, which is the cooling and moisturizing. That's going to help put out that fire. So foods that are hot should be avoided. So that's going to be lamb, venison, goat, shrimp, chicken, sweet rice, um, cinnamon, ginger, sage. Those are things that are going to be more warming and we want to be very careful using those. Um, things that stagnate the liver too much, um, like uh, really heavy red meats, uh, Eggs can be in too high a, a, a too high a dose can be too much for these guys, um, and high glycemic, high carbohydrate foods. So dry kibble is going to be a huge problem for these guys. Um, we want to be very careful with foods that uh, uh, bring about more dampness. So dairy can be a problem, um, and we want to avoid really large meals. So foods that we can use to soothe that liver chi include duck. Um, brown rice if you use grains, celery, cucumbers, dandelion greens, lettuce, 
mushrooms, radishes, seaweed, uh, spinach, and sprouts, apples, lemons, and mangoes, chamomile, coriander, uh, vinegar in very small amounts. And then we want to clear heat. So proteins that are really good for clearing heat are things like alligator, cod, the chicken egg white is very good, scallops and conch if you live somewhere where you can get that. Uh, flax and flaxseed are good, bamboo leaf, bamboo shoots, celery, cucumber, dandelion greens, lettuce and sprouts, bananas, cranberry, um, aloe, green algae, peppermint. So we use a lot of those things to try to help drain and soothe. And you'll notice that quite a few of those things are in um, that liver uh, dry eye diet. And um, you'll also see them in the liver chi stagnation diet that's in here. Okay. And all right. So then we also have the liver yin deficiency affecting the eyes. So it's usually seen in the later stages of conjunctivitis where we're starting to get a lot of dryness. Um, so keratitis and the KCS. Um, if it's severe and chronic and if there's a concurrent kidney yin or jing deficiency, it can be associated with cataracts or glaucoma. Um, so these are going to be dry red eyes, probably some poor vision cool seeking and panting with the warm ears and paws again. Tongue is going to be red or deep red and dry with crack lines. Um, and so the treatment goals are to tonify the liver and kidney yin. So we're really looking at that cooling and moisturizing. So foods that we can use for that, alligator, um, clams, cod, duck, mussels, octopus, oyster. I know some of these things you don't think about. Pork kidney scallop, uh, turkey. <coughs> uh, black sesame seeds and chia seeds are very good. Um, let's see, green beans, sunflower seeds, green algae, asparagus, broccoli, cranberry, kelp, pineapple, seaweed, tremella mushrooms are very good here, um, and licorice. Foods to avoid with the liver yin deficiency, again, are going to be those hot drying things like uh, mutton and venison, goat, shrimp, chicken. Um, and we want to, again, avoid engendering damp. So this is a case study of a four-year-old female spayed cat presented for TCVM treatment of bilateral glaucoma, which is increased pressure in the eyes, causes blindness and been going on for two months. Um, she has a history of uveitis or inflammation inside the eye, and then it led to glaucoma after being long standing. She'd been treated for the two months with uh, a couple of different topical eye drops, but they were not controlling the blood pressure. So normal is um, between 10 and 25, and her pressures were 47 in the left eye and 30 in the right. So not very comfortable, very painful. Her eyes were bulging. Um, she had a red, dry tongue, warm ears, trunk, and paws. Corneas, uh, the front of the eyes, were cloudy. Both eyes were painful, and they had uh, red uh, blood vessels in the whites of the eyes. So she was diagnosed with liver fire flaring up and liver yin deficiency. So our goal is to clear the liver heat and fire and tonify yin. So she got acupuncture, and she was prescribed an herb and started on a canned food. I would have gone for raw, but hey, you know, uh, a canned food with a cool protein such as whitefish, duck, or turkey. And the client was uh, instructed to avoid hot foods such as chicken, shrimp, or ven venison. Over the next five years, with continued herbal medicine and food therapy and occasional acupuncture sessions, her eye pressures were maintained in the normal range to the high 20s, which is great because normal is 25 or below. Her eyes were overall comfortable and quiet with a few incidences of conjunctivitis and squinting controlled with acupuncture sessions. Although the acupuncture and herbal medicine were the core of the cat's treatment, food therapy played a supportive role and empowered the owner as a participant in her cat's eye health. So it is possible to treat a lot of problems that we see in the eye by using food therapy, sometimes we need to add other things, you know, whether that's a topical drop or whether we're adding medications. Um, 
but there's just so much that we can do, particularly if we understand what is underlying that. So for instance, in the cases that I would see where there's an underlying cancer or lymphoma that's causing these bright red eyeballs, well, obviously putting drops in the eyes is not solving that overall problem. So we're going to look at where is that coming from and how are we going to treat the underlying cause or the more specific problem so that it's not a reoccurring problem. So if you have an animal that has chronic conjunctivitis, chronic eye problems, dry eye, whatever that may be, definitely focus on food therapy to support the liver, whether that's cooling and draining or, um, Blood, blood tonic support but and getting chi moving, that's the kind of stuff that we need to do for these guys. So hopefully that was a little bit of help. Any uh, advice on persistent runny eyes? We're going to talk more about that a little bit more tomorrow, things that we can do um, to add to the diet and also topically and some other things that we have for eye staining and that sort of thing. I think that's tomorrow. Okay, that's all I got.